each and every one of our hearts that we would receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I ask it in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to start by reminding you that we serve a great, big, wonderful God. A great, big, wonderful God, and God loves us. God has special privileges prepared for each and every one of us that praise and worship and serve Him. He loves us. I realize that there's a lot of negative things happening in our world today, and especially here in the United States. All of the things that are going on, and we don't know who to believe or what to believe most of the time. The news we're getting and everything, it's, people are confused, others are discouraged, and as I said, people are getting negative. We don't know what to do, so they've started to get angry, get negative. God wants us to be positive. As believers, God wants us to have a positive attitude. So I want to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart tonight. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 14. And I'll be sharing some other scripture as we go along. Romans chapter 14, verse 5. And it says, chapter 14, verse 5, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Then we go to verse 23. Verse 23 says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is, is not of faith is sin. Drawing your attention to the last portion of that verse, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So I want you to listen again to what the Lord is saying to each and every one of us. What the Word of God is saying to every believer, to every believer. God's Word is positive. Positive. It's positive. It's faith building. When you read the Bible, you won't find yourself getting negative. The Holy Spirit builds us up through the Word of God. God wants us to walk in a positive realm with a positive attitude. Regardless of what's going on around and about us, regardless of all of the uncertainty, regardless of things that you're hearing that you don't know whether to believe or not, God wants us to be positive. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to remember, God is in control of it all. No matter what man says or what man is trying to do, be it governor or president, whatever, God is in total control. So this is the, what the Word of God says to every true believer. I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengtheneth me. That's a positive statement that God gives to every believer. If we believe Him, I can do all things, all things, okay, through Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. God's never going to ask us to do anything that He doesn't give us the ability to do it. He's right there with us at every moment. That thought comes, I can't do this. You say, devil, you're a liar. Through God, I can do it. The Lord will show me what to do. Okay? I can do all things through Christ Jesus whom strengthen me. Because, why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Psalms 46, 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed? We will not fear. Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we won't fear, because God is in control. So I want to speak to you tonight about the sin of negativism. See? Webster says that negativism is an attitude of mind marked by skepticism about nearly everything affirmed by others. Well, now I don't believe that, or that can't happen. We get a negative thought or attitude toward it. A tendency to do something at variance with what is asked. 
I don't want to do what you want me to do. I'll do it my way. Negative. To be negative and stay there is to be defeated. To be sure, every one of us, and hear me carefully tonight, every one of us go through times when doubt would grip a hold of us. Something happens and immediately the first thought was, how am I going to do it? I can't do that. That's the first thought. But if we know God, if we're believers and following God, immediately the Holy Spirit reminds us, I can do all things through Christ Jesus whom strengthens me. He reminds us we are God's children. God has his hand upon every one of it. So some would say, but how do we handle these doubts? God's word teaches us. There are many examples in the word of God. I ask you to follow with me for a few minutes. First one I want to share with you and remind you is Abraham. Remember, Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. God told him, I want you to leave here. I want you to leave everything you know and go off to a place I'm going to show you of. Okay. Abraham knew it was God speaking to him. He believed God and went to follow him. He went not knowing where he was going, not knowing what he was going to do when he got there, not understanding how he was going to make a living, anything. He said, God said to go, and I'm going. Can you imagine coming to your wife and saying, uh, come home and say, honey, uh, pack up, we're leaving. What do you mean we're leaving? Where are we going? Well, I, I don't know yet, but get ready, we're going. We're going to just follow where God wants us. Well, what are we going to do? What happens when we get there? What are we, I don't know. I don't know. Can you imagine that? Abraham never questioned. Gathered all he had, gathered what family he had, took his wife, his son-in-law, and off they went. God told him, he made a promise. He said, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. A great nation. So I can imagine in my mind that Abraham thought, God's going to take me to a place where there's nobody else there. And God's going to somehow build a great nation there and make me the father of it. But when Abraham arrived where God told him to be, it was already populated. There was all kinds of people there. I can imagine he thought, what is this? And on top of that, they were going through a famine. There was no food. Abraham thought, wow. He said to his wife, Sarah, we're going to go down to Egypt. There's plenty of food in Egypt. We're going. Notice, he didn't ask God. He didn't pray about it. He just said, there's nothing here, and I'm going. What a mess it made. First off, he quit trusting God. Said to Sarah, let's, let's tell him that you're my sister. You're a beautiful woman. And when we get there, they're going to kill me so they can take you. So let's just tell them you're my sister. It got worse and worse. Until finally, they drove Abraham out, sent him back. But he came back a very wealthy man. But the problems were just beginning. It got worse and worse for him. Okay. Finally, Abraham came to the place. Where's the promise? Lord, where is the promise? Years went by. Years went by. God, you promised me a son. I don't have a son. You promised me. Now, I, when I die, this, the heir of my whatever I have is going to be my servant, the head servant. The Lord said, no, that's not going to be. You are going to have a son. Abraham is almost 100 years old. Sarah is 99. When she heard that, she laughed. God asked, why did she laugh? Then she had to lie about it. I, I didn't laugh. But one year later, Abraham had a son. Okay. In that meantime, Abraham got so discouraged. The Bible said at night he was in the tent and no doubt thinking about all of those things. Been there? Problems come. Troubles are going. You're trying to figure out how you're going to handle it, how you're going to take care of it. Next thing you know, it's midnight or past. Maybe three o'clock in the morning, you wake up and you can't sleep and you're worried about all of this stuff. That's the way it was with Abraham. And all of a sudden, God said, Abraham, come out here. He said, look up. Count the stars if you can. Abraham said, I can't do that. God said, so will your seed be. 
your seed as the sand covers the earth. It's going to be so many. What did, he, what did God do? Did God let him lay there in self-pity? Did God let him lay there being negative over everything? No. God called him out to look up. That's what God would say to every one of us when we start getting negative. God would call us to looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Get our mind back on the word of God. Get our minds back on the God who loves us, prepared everything for us. If we are listening, God will not let us remain negative. There are times when all of everybody goes through something that can make them negative. But if you're really living for God, he won't let you stay there. God will not do it. God's word says to us, call unto me and I will answer you. I will answer you. There are things that come into our lives that if we let them, if we keep dwelling on them, they'll make us negative. But God says, call unto me. Call unto me. We must remember that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So let's get our minds off of the negative and turn it back to begin to think about God. God has ministered something into my heart to share with you. So I want to share it with you tonight. The first thing I want to remind you is that there is power in prayer. There's power in prayer. Have you ever had somebody ask you, what do you pray for? How do you pray? What does it mean? I've had people ask me that. Why do you pray? Why should I pray? How do I pray? And what good does it? Folks, there's power in prayer. Okay? The prayer of faith. Power to completely change circumstances. Believe God and trust him. Let me give you an example. Okay. Elisha was a prophet. And every once in a while, he would take a journey to go to the school of the prophets. And as he was going, he passed through Shunem. There was a woman and her husband that lived close to the roadside where he passed. And they would stop him and invite him to come in, him and his servant, and they would feed him. Just take care of him a while, and he would go on his way. This happened for several times. They got to know him. So his wife one day said to him, Honey, why don't we build a little room for the prophet to stay in so he can come, eat with us, stay overnight, and go on his way? So that's what they did. They built a little room for him. And one day as he was coming, he went in. He's laying on the bed, resting, and he calls his servant Gehazi and he says, what can we do for this woman? For all the kindness that they've showed to us. He said, call her. So she came and Elisha asked her, what could I do for you? What could I do for you? Could I speak to the king for you? She said, no, I don't need that. She said, I dwell here among my own people. I don't need that. So he said, well, what can I do for you? I don't need anything. So she started to go away. Gehazi said, don't you realize she doesn't have any children? Elijah, Elisha called her back and he told her, this time next year, you will have a son. And she said, oh, oh, my, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. He said, this time next year. Sure enough, a year goes by, she has a son. Several years go by and the boy grows up a bit. And one day he goes out to the field where, where his father's working. And when he gets there, his head is splitting. And he sat on his father and said, my father, my father, my head, my head. His dad called one of the servants and said, take him to his mother. She brings him back. He brings her back. She sets him on her lap. And the Bible said at noon, he died. He died. She picked him up, carried him up to the prophet's room, laid him on the bed, walked out, shut the door, told her husband, have one of the servants saddle me a donkey. I'm going to the prophet. He asked, well, why are you going there? It's not a new moon. It's not a worship day. She said, it'll be all right. It'll be fine. And she went. So on her way, Elisha sees her coming. And he says, that's the Shumanite woman. Something must be wrong. And the Lord has kept it from me. So she came. She dropped and wrapped her arms around his feet and Gehazi pulled her away. And Elisha said, leave her alone. There's something wrong. And so she asked him, 
Did not I ask you not to lie to me about a son? Gehaz, uh, Elisha said to Gehaz, I take my staff, go to that boy, and lay this on him. If you meet somebody coming, don't speak to them. If they speak to you, don't answer them. Get going. The woman says to him, as the Lord lives, I will not leave you. So they went back to her house. The, boy, the servant meets him on the way and says, nothing happens. The child is still dead. The prophet goes in, goes upstairs to the room, goes in, shuts the door, lays himself on the boy, puts his hands in his hands, his face in his, and he began to pray. He got up, he walked around a little bit, pray, went back and laid on him again. And the life came back into the boy. He presented him back to his mother. I ask you to think about this for a moment. It's a wonderful story when you go on to read it. But think about that woman sitting there in her lap. Her son dies. She did not go into hysterics. She did not question. She took him up, laid him on the bed and went out to go to the prophet. She didn't have any doubts. She was not negative. She just, in her heart, knew if I can get to the prophet, the prophet can raise him up. God will give him back to me. Nothing negative. She would not allow it. When she got there, Elisha seen her come, he asked her, is all well? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with the boy? Both times she said, all is well, all is well. Nothing negative. She had her trust in God. I wonder tonight, are we that positive? The relationship we have to God, is it strong enough that no matter what comes, no matter what begins to shake us, no matter what, we can keep focused on Jesus. Not let, let negative thoughts come. Say it's not going to happen. God's going to take care of me. God's going to take care of me. She let, no, she let no negative thought come to control her mind. She believed God. That's positive living. That brings victory. Positive living brings victory. And this day and hour in which we are living, are we positive? We don't know what's going to happen. You read the newspaper and you find something different every day. President's going to do this, president's going to do that, governor's going to do this. None of it makes sense, but they're going to do it. Okay. Does it make us negative? Do we worry about it? I love what my wife tells me all the time. I'll say, honey, look, listen to what they say. She said, I don't want to hear it. I can't change it anyway, so I'm just going to pray about it. She said, I don't worry about it. I can't change it. But God can. But God can. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Now remember this. Negative is in the mind. It affects our minds. It's an attitude of the mind. The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect will of God in you. God has a perfect will for us. So he tells us, not to be conformed to the world. Don't fall into that trap, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How we do it. God's word, again, has the answer for us. And you need to hear it. Do you remember Asaph? In Psalm 73, you'll find that Asaph was the choir director. And he took all the psalms that David gave him and put them to music to be sung in the temple. What a, what a beautiful job. Put that, and if you read the Psalms of David, they're, they're up, most of them are uplifting, positive. Asaph put them to sing the music so they could sing them. But one day something happened to Asaph. Doesn't, the Bible doesn't say what, but it said Asaph came out. He wanted to just die. He wanted to quit. He said, I didn't have anybody to talk to. He's when I looked at the world and I, I saw the men and how that they were prospering. They seemed to have no troubles. And here we're struggling to keep going. He thought it was so unfair. It began to, to trouble him. It began to, to get on to where he's just going to quit following God. He said, these guys have no problem at all. Look at us. 
He said, I wanted to talk to somebody, but I was afraid to talk to anybody. If, if I did, I'd destroy their faith. So I said, I tried to keep it. It got so heavy that he said, then I went into the temple. It's a beautiful thing. He came out of the temple rejoicing. He said, God showed him what the end of the unrighteous is, what God's going to do, the blessings that are for the righteous. It lifted him right back up. What does that say to us? How are we going to get past the negative? How are we going to get away from all the, the evil that's going on? Get focused on him. Come to church. Come to prayer meeting. Spend time in, your, in the Bible. Okay. Do you remember the prophet Isaiah? When Isaiah was just a young man, wasn't really a prophet yet, he was raised in the courtyard. King Uzziah, was, he was very close to King Uzziah. The Bible says in chapter, Isaiah chapter 6, the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And his train filled the temple. He goes on to describe it. What happened to him? When Uzziah died, it like to broke his heart. Discouraged him. He got down in the dumps till he went into the temple. When he went into the temple, God gave him a vision. And he saw the Lord. God began to speak to him. Began to tell him about all of those that were around him that were perishing. And he said, I need someone to go and tell them. And as Isaiah immediately said, here am I, Lord, send me. I'll go, send me. God called him to be a prophet. From that time on, we have the book of Isaiah telling all that God revealed to him. Why? Because he would not stay negative. He knew the only way to get is to get back into the presence of God. God wants each and every one of us to understand that tonight. Things are going to keep coming. They're not going to get any better. As a matter of fact, they're going to get worse. What does that mean to us? It means we keep our eyes on Jesus. God's going to take care of us just like he promised. But my God shall supply all your need. I want to draw your attention to that little three-letter word. All. All your need. He's not talking about just money. He's talking about everything we have need of. God will supply it. Okay. And he asked, all we have to do is trust him, believe him, get into the word and believe him. When we see all of this stuff happening, be like my wife. I don't want to hear it. I can't change it anyway. I'll just pray about it. I'll just pray about it. What happens? God keeps her lifted up, keeps her encouraged. Okay. Except when I'd be bad to her. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. But God keeps her happy. He keeps her flat. She doesn't think about it. She doesn't worry about it. She knows that God's in control. If worse comes to work, we're going up in the rapture. We're going to leave it all behind us. We're going home. So the, the thing that God wants us to hear tonight is keep positive. Keep a positive attitude. You find yourself getting a little down, getting a little discouraged, maybe getting a little negative, get into your prayer closet. Turn it over to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. Remember, I said about Abraham, it was 25 years from the day that God made that promise to Abraham about giving him a son until Isaac was born. 25 years. Can you imagine the struggle that he had? Lord, where's the promise? Where's the promise? Okay. But God kept his word and gave the promise. He's going to keep the word he's given to every one of us. So keep trusting. Don't get negative. Get positive over it. When Satan tries to tell you, oh, it's not going to happen, just turn aside, get along with the Lord and talk it over with him. And he'll just renew your strength, renew your faith, put you back on the track so that we're following him. He's going to take care of us just like he promised. There are times we look and think, how is it going to be? How is this going to happen? We don't have to know how. Just trust him. He'll do it and he'll show us. Father, tonight I thank and praise you for the privilege of sharing your word this evening. 
I'm asking, may the Holy Spirit go before me tonight and speak to each and every one of our hearts. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the future will bring. But you do, and you're in control of it. You are the Lord, our God, and our lives are in your hand. And so, Father, we just ask you tonight, touch each one of us. Touch us. Keep us with a positive attitude. No matter what's going on, help us. May the Holy Spirit, we start to get a little down, may the Holy Spirit touch us and draw us up keeping us positive. Meet every need that is represented here tonight. Father, there may be those in the service tonight or those that are listening through the service that have special needs, that are wondering, how am I going to meet this need? How am I going to take care of this matter? Help them to realize tonight. Give them that assurance in their heart, the promise that you've given us. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He never fails. His riches never run out. So, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.